Hey, John here. So we're looking at a 2010 Subaru with the uh, wimpy four-cylinder, the uh, single over, single overhead cam four-cylinder, and uh, it's got a the bottle on the. Uh, the symptoms are the red lights flashing, which means it's overheating. Not quite overheated, but on its way up there, if it's a solid red light, then it's overheated. But the coolant bottle has nothing left in it, and. I just checked the upper radiator hose and the lower radiator hose, and I can't, of course it's raining out, I can't see any leaks, uh, but having a rain doesn't help. I don't smell anything, so i got to get to the bottom of this, find out where this, this fluid is going and why it's overheating. So the first thing I guess is to put it under pressure and see if there's any obvious leak. Because like I said, I went around, looked at all the clamps, uh, squeezed all the hoses, everything seems fine, but uh, the bottle's empty and the light's on, so it's overheating for a reason. And I can't imagine it's just low on fluid, uh, but perhaps it's just low on fluid. <laughs> so let's put it under some pressure and see if there's a leak somewhere. So I'm not sure if I have a Scooby-Doo adapter for this, hopefully. Oh boy, it doesn't look like it, does it? It doesn't look like it. Well, maybe this maybe this will work. Let's see. I think it's still hot, so maybe, maybe be. I think I might. Yeah, I do. Actually, yeah. Small one, all right. That's the one there. That's the one there. Let's see. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, so I got the right adapter, got it hooked up. Let's apply some pressure and see if this sucker has any leaks. Huh? All right, I got the cap, the appropriate cap, appropriate uh, stuff on there. Let's get a little light on the subject. Let's pump her up and see if this thing has a leak. Hopefully it won't. So we can go up to uh, 13 to 14 pounds. That's what uh, 104 kPa's equate to on this little chart anyways. Oh boy. Can't get any pressure in there. Oh, I hear something. Boy, it's difficult to get it up to pressure. I don't know if that's the cap leaking or... Oh, uh-oh, nope. Houston, we have a problem. I think the radiator's bad, you gotta be shitting me. Oh boy. I thought it was the cap, but it's not. Let me take this uh, duct off. I hear it pissing out under here somewhere. Yeah, let's try that again. I could see something. I have a feeling it's the radiator. That's gonna suck. Oh boy. I see it bubbling up. I was I keep hitting this pressure relief. I was hoping it was the upper radiator hose clamp or something. But no, it's not looking good. Although this radiator looks like you can take it out in about four minutes. So maybe there's some good signs. Taking a little closer. That explains why the lights blinking on and off here and there wasn't always on. It, it would blink on, then go away, then blink on, go away, because it's at the top of the radiator. If it was at the bottom, I'm sure I would have saw some, uh, you know, fluid on the ground or whatever. But I think it's mostly this is under pressure. That's why that fluid's coming out. So I think most of this uh, top of the radiator, it's just overheating because it's, uh, well, you know, the drill. So I don't know plastic but that's metal so I'm assuming something got separated this is the radiator all right I'm off to the parts store I guess these clamps look good everything looks good except for that radiator although there is 175,000 miles on this vehicle so there's 175,000 miles on this radiator 
Yeah, good old Napa's got one, 125 bucks. He says he's got one in stock, so this this looks like it's going to be really easy. So I'm thinking, first I got to go into there and see if there's a babcock or papcock or whatever you want to call it, some kind of cockamism to uh, get that fluid out of there. But it looks like I can just take these, uh, you know, these two bolts off. It looks like the whole radiator and fans will come right out of there, almost like a NASCAR deal, you know, pit stop. Let me get down here and see what happens. Be nice if I could just drain this. Doesn't look like one. Nope. No pepcock. No babcock. No. Oh, wait a minute. What is that? Yeah, looks like some kind of, maybe it's just a plug. Oops, what are we looking at here? I don't know, let's see if I can get this piece down. Maybe there's a plug over there. Yeah, so you just take this splash guard down. It's, it's just got, uh, where is it, one bolt and two little plastic uh, retainers there. And that is a, uh, a relief right there. So, let's see, this plastic shouldn't be rusted. Let's see if it'll uh, turn. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I think that's going to work out just fine. Let me get this bucket, let me get this thing set up. Yeah, this should be uh, like a five minute radiator change. Right? Watch your hands. Oh, no, that's cold. Sweet. Want that drain? Take off, whoop. Here you go. Let that drain and uh, take off the uh, lower radiator hose. Yeah, might, as well, might as well take the splash guard down too. It's so easy to do. And I can get to the hose. It's dark in here, so I'll be right back. Alright, well, while that other side's draining, I'm thinking here one clamp, two clamp, three clamp for your tranny lines, and uh, this electrical connector. I'm thinking, and there's an electrical cl c connector on the other side. I'm thinking, once that's done, the upper radiator hose, radiator, and uh, this thing should lift right out of there. It's quite possibly the the easiest radiator I've ever dealt, oh, dealt with. Sorry about that. Let's see here. Now, you know, famous last words. Let's see what happens with these clamps, but. They're actually in good shape. I mean, it's only a 2010. This, I say only. This car's 10 years old, but the, the clamps usually are rusted. You know, he's actually uh, look in pretty good shape. Just sneak it back. Come on, you bugger! I gotta get a pair of. They make a special pair of pliers for these clamps. I still have been meaning to get some. Oh, I just tough it out with the old pliers. Hey, that bottom radiator hose is still still warm. They're like a pair of vice grips, and they got a little uh, little doohickey. Makes things a little easier. So before I try to get that off, let me see if I can get this off. No problem. No problem. Uh, I gotta get my my drainer drainage over here before I do that. But my next move is take a couple of ticks. All right. See if we can get this uh, radiator hose kind of loosened up. All right. So I don't want to buy another hose. I don't have to. Oh yeah. I think this thing's going to come right off. Let me move this strain. Alright, so far so good. So I just took a pick for these tranny lines. You know, got in there, got a little loose, took a pair of pliers and uh, just cracked her loose and uh, everything's coming off pretty good. Let's get this uh, bottom radiator hose off. You know something's going to go wrong somewhere. But so far, everything's just sailing right along. Where is you? Let's see if this will cooperate. I did send a pick in there too. 
Oh, it's moving. All right. Hey, we're getting lucky here. Everything's moving along just fine. Let's just make sure we don't make a complete mess. I don't know how much fluid's left in here, but. Oop. Not too much. Now I realize having a pit makes this 100 times easier, but it's not like we have a Corvette here. So just a set of ramps, and uh, now it's a Forester, so pretty high off the ground anyways. But, you know, we all been there laying on the back. Laying on the back, this ain't my day. Uh, so now what's left? Just go out and do the top radiator hose. I'm expecting this thing just to poof right out of there. Oh, did I mention I did the uh, electrical connectors? And that's one of those deals you just, you know, the push pin deal. Yeah, you figure it out. Uh, those came off decent. So let's go top side. I think we're done down here. I literally do. All right. So up here, I think, I literally think I'm going to be done with this in 10 minutes. So I, here's what I'm thinking. Taking this, this retainer nut here, looks like a 12, and this one, and this whole thing should just slide right out of there. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, but I'm going to elect to take take off the uh, I don't know what we're looking at here, the bottom radiator or the top radiator hose from from the, uh, the thermostat housing, just because if I take it off on a radiator when I go because I'm leaving these fans on, uh, hopefully leaving the fans on. So if I try to lift it off, take it out there, it's going to kind of squish the hose. Gonna, I don't want to kink that hose, so I'm going to take it off here, and then everything should just lift out of there like like a champion. That's what I'm thinking. I don't see any other things that are in my way. Maybe maybe this. But once I get these off, probably lean it forward a little bit. This this bracket looks like it's in a way. It's just plastic and it looks like literally looks like one little just, yeah I think this yeah this thing just oh yeah it pops right out of there. Looks like one little screw. I'll take it out anyways. Put my screw together. It looks like a plastic screw at that. It's not even a screw. Yeah, it's just a little push pin, I think. Yeah, another little push pin. And I think this thing just pops right out of there. Can't really see in here. Yeah. Yeah, some kind of retainer. Just kind of holds the uh, radiator in place, I think, but it's uh, just a piece of plastic. So that was easy to come out. I don't want to lose this. Put that aside. All right, let me get this top radiator hose, and we're good. All right, let's see if we can get this, uh, this top clamp off. All right, now problem. About as easy as the bottom one. I'm going to get me one of the Paris pliers. It's the last thing I do. Pliers work. It's just that you need that extra bite so it won't let go. There it comes. Get her. There it goes. Now we're clear. I don't think there should be anything in here. Maybe a little bit. Nothing really. Alright. What's next? Get these two uh, 12 millimeter bolts. And we're taking this thing out. See if my thoughts were correct. It should just be the rubber, yeah. rubber mounted on there. Huh. I think this is going to come out real easy. Wish I had the radiator. Pop it right back in. Let's see. Let me grab it. Yep, that one's gone. Just got to take them out of holes in the bottom. Jesus, can't be this easy. This can't be. Look 
волшебный. Вуала. Вуала. So this is the, uh, the radiator, actually comes with a, uh, I don't know, some extra parts here, maybe in case you got a different application, but those are the, those are the fellas I need. The only thing it doesn't come with is the, uh, the padding. That, the stock one came with, this is the stock one, you know, it has this uh, rubber membrane here. And, and this rubber up here. I, I think I got some of this in the basement. I'll put this on up on the top. I don't have rubber here like this, but let me see what I can come up with. Anyway, let's put this thing back together. All right. So I did have a little bit of this stuff hanging around. So I did dress both both edges like the uh, the original. Anyways, let me flip it over, put everything back together, and uh, get this pit stop done. Yeah, so I got everything back the way it was. That took about like three seconds. It's just two bolts, one, two for this thing. Well, you put the, the hoses on first, and they kind of fit in the, in the holes in the corral, and you can't really screw that up. I was a little bit worried about how they would twist, but you just follow the pattern and uh, put this little heat shield back on. Uh, you know, simple. The way you took it off, the way it goes on, really simple. So let's, uh, let's bury this thing in there and get on. Alright, got everything swapped out. Swapped out and ready to go. Should be pretty easy. in the hole. Should be close. I'm going to go underneath, underneath to make sure uh, it's in the hole. It's in the hole. I forgot what we did here. Just rest against here. Thanks. So. That plastic piece, remember? Plastic piece. You just bolt it to there, right? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. All right, so that doesn't hold it there. Oh, that might be for the air dam. Probably didn't need to remove that, but nevertheless. So we just got the two. This is this is so simple. So simple. One, two. One, two. T and T. People we'll say the same thing, so assume that uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Actually, I put these in first. No problem. It is muggy out here, but something's wrong with his camera. Can't even make anything out. Yeah. So that was weird. The uh, the lens on the inside of the lens the condensation, of course. That was yesterday, it was muggier than hell, and today it's 50, I got a sweatshirt on. Uh, welcome to New England. So anyways, uh, 
I forgot where we left off, but just putting the, you know, the lower radiator hose, uh, the two uh, tranny lines, you know, just put everything back together the way it was, obviously. And the two uh, splash guards underneath, then a top radiator hose, and then this piece. So this project literally was, uh, if I didn't have to, you know, if I had to do it again, I could probably do it in 20 minutes. Uh, really easy, simple to do on a scale of 1 to 10, it's probably a 2. The only reason it would be a 2, if you don't have a pit or a lift or something, you'd have to crawl under the thing and, you know, do it the old laying on your back, getting splashed in your face, that whole thing. So, other than that, this, this, uh, oh, and don't forget to fill up your reservoir and uh, check your tranny fluid. Other than that, this is a really simple rip it out, put it in kind of deal. It took uh, one jug of, I use straight antifreeze. And then uh, took another jug and topped it off and ran a little bit with uh, just regular water. Just uh, make sure your uh, fluid is at the uh, proper level. And uh, I didn't even bother with the tranny fluid. So so little came out. The uh, I forget what side it's on. The tranny tranny fluid was was still in within the marks. So that's all I got for uh, this week. Maybe see you next week. Yeah, I'll have something to do. I'm sure. Anyways, later.